Uh, so uh, the question really is, if you have a patient with uh, post-cataract endophthalmitis, hand motion, what are you going to do? I think this is the important question. And for the sake of time, in conclusion, <laughs> <laughs> So tap and inject within one hour, wherever the patient is. Don't take it to OR, in clinic. It's already an infected eye. Intravitreal vancomycin, keftazidem, dexamethasone. And review 24, 48 hours. And of course, systemic antibiotic, moxifloxacinolin, uh, topical steroid drops. And if not better, in 48 hours usually is the decision. 24 hours if it's a virulent organism, if you grow strep, or it looks like a strep, then you need to do another action, and usually it's a vitrectomy with repeat injection if you have something from the culture, uh, otherwise you do empirical again. I need to stop at the better. This is very important because things are not gonna disappear completely in 48 hours, but you have a signal that this eye is getting better. And once you have the signal that this eye is getting better, less pain, less AC reaction, vitreous haze probably less, then you know your this eye is sterile now. You don't need to inject anymore, and it will take si time for things to settle, and then you may need to come and do an elective vitrectomy for vitreous opacities. So I just have to say we're declaring war here. And uh, the war is against uh, Jim Paolo Gini. I think he regrets now giving me an award yesterday. And Ferrik Kuhn. And it's me and Tari. Tari has a presentation on the same topic as well. So I prefer to inject going with the EVS. And we all know the results if your vision is better than light perception. There's no difference between injection and antibiotics. Uh, sorry, injections and vitrectomy. There are vitrectomy challenges. Visualization is a problem. Peeling the hyaloid is difficult. Peeling the hyaloid is dangerous and logistics. Uh, imagine this is a patient coming here. Uh, you're trying to set up a vitrectomy. As time is going, the staph epidermidis, for example, is doubling every 30 minutes, right? So you're trying here to set up operating room, get to operating room, and this is exactly what's happening. Every 20, 30 minutes, there is doubling of the organism loads. So there are lots of EVRS criticism. It's not contemporary data. Vitrectomy was not complete. Instrumentation outdated. And again, if you look at the, all the evidence really from big studies from Australia in 2005, that's the biggest study, showed that 618 vision uh, was actually achieving 618 was not very different uh, if you do vitrectomy or if you do intravitreal antibiotics uh, to start with. Again, s similar data from Medicare in US 2015, which actually showed very much the same. And a recent study from Taiwan showed very much the same, maybe less elective vitrectomies if you do uh, early vitrectomies. And even my interpretation of uh, Dr. Kuhn and Dr. Uh, Gini's data is really, they manage patients with injections, but earlier vitrectomy. So I don't think it's contradicting. Right, I just want to stop here, this is important. I think the general surgeon mentality, this is an abscess, it has to be drained, right? But this is not really true for the eye. And that, again, that's their mentality. This is, again, the C, and this child, the child will never pollute the C, right? So this is the C is the pus, this is the antibiotic, so if you're giving injection, you're not doing anything. But this is not true for the eye. The reason is, if this is the minimal inhibitory concentration, this is the minimal bactericidal concentration of drug in tissue, which is four times the minimal uh, inhibitory concentration. The Cmax maximum effect achieves at 10 times. Vancomycin, one milligram, even not two milligram, is 50 to 200 MIC. So that's really not a dose of vancomycin, that's super MIC dose. And the evidence for that, if you look at the 1995 EVS, the number of patients who were inject, re-injected, whether they had vitrectomy or uh, TAP, was very small, 7%. So it means that most eyes get sterile after one injection. So I think to be able to do that quickly, the, the, the thing you need to do is vitreous TAP and inject. If I do vitrectomy, then if I have to remove the lens, I would remove the capsule. I understand I'm running out of time, but I think the, my tips, two tips on vitrectomy, 
is you have to be conservative, try to peel the hyaloid, but be wary. You don't want to end up with a break, because if you end up with a break, there is a high risk that the retina would, detachment may not settle. So I would go for the hyaloid, but just be wary and try not to end up with a break. If you end up with a break, then um, silicon oil probably is better because then uh, you have more uh, clearance of the media and we know about its uh, possible bactericidal or bacteriostatic effect. So I know they were gonna ask me what you're gonna do if it's your eye. So I know what I will do for my eyes, an injection. If difficult to know if it's like my mother is in low eye. So not sure about that. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't want to argue at all, but my, my comment is a question. What is the end point of our intervention? My end point is not killing the organism. My end point is getting the stuff out of the eye because that gives the macula a better chance of, of recovery because it's not just the organism itself that causes destruction, it's, it's enzymes, it's toxins, which remain inside the eye even if we kill the organism. I think that's always the sort of why vitrectomy was introduced to decrease the viral load, but the evidence really is that <coughs> both eyes do the same. And it's really, if you think about, I think, think it's 10 p.m. now, a patient comes with endophthalmitis. So what are we gonna do? Even in the best center, how long will it take to set up for a vitrectomy? That's a very good point. That, that is an issue. And, and it's a big issue. I know it's, okay, what, what's the ideal? But I think the ideal needs to be, you know, practical as well. So that's my point. Yes, that's absolutely true. That is an issue. Uh, so what I'm saying is if I'm able to do vitrectomy immediately. I will do vitrectomy immediately. And, and the, the study that we did had far superior results uh, uh, over the EVS. And it's not because we are better surgeons, we are, but that's not the point. The point is that we don't leave stuff inside the eye. And the earlier you do it, the better chances to, to do easy surgery because the cases you showed are very difficult. Uh, but if you do it early, it's a lot easier surgery with a much reduced risk compared to the time of the EVS. That is the problem. We do not have the exact uh, data on this. And uh, everything, when you look at the papers who deal with vitrectomy, they focus <coughs> on the complication as retinal detachment. They are quite higher, and on the other hand, the functional results on vitrectomy case appear to be better if complications were no. excluded. But even, but, even the EVS study, but even the EVS study had a lower incidence of retinal detachment for the vitrectomy group than it did for the non-vitrectomy group. So the fear of complications with vitrectomy I think, and especially to, with today's small gauge and all the advantages we have with wide vision and everything, I think are much less than when the EVS study was performed. And even then, the retinal detachment ratio was a lot lower in the vitrectomized group than it was in the I don't think it was statistically group. significant. Hmm? I don't think it was, the difference was statistically significant. No, it was. But then, it was. with the detachment? Statistically, it was significant. Right. The retinal detachment group, uh, uh, the retinal detachment rate was significantly lower in the vitrectomized group than in the non-vitrectomized group. But, um, but I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit biased, so that's why I didn't talk. But I think you made a good point. This is a question of time. So you wait, and the more you wait, the worse the, the conditions get, the more difficult the surgery gets. So it, if you're going to do surgery, if you wait six, 10, 12 hours, it's gonna be more difficult surgery, right? So uh, I understand that the main issue is not being able to set up theater uh, in, uh, uh, soon enough, uh, quickly enough, because you've got many other <coughs> things to do. So I see injections as a first line of defense but that does not exclude the fact that you may want to go on to the tractor. But I won't take up any more time. I think we'll come back to this uh, topic and then you come uh, in. Very quick comment. I, I, I do not follow the EVS study group. 
and I do not wait until light perception. I totally agree with Dr. Farron Kuhn. I operate much earlier, and I do not follow, I do not wait until there's light perception. But I think we come to the same point, really, is you wait setting up theater, you wait for hours. That's the problem, unless you really you know, sitting in theater waiting for patients and you don't have any elective patients that you will have to cancel. It's just, I think, in essence, it's a good idea, but then in reality, it just cannot happen. I don't know.